Yes, hello, viewers. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, Cornelio. It's your station, so why don't you welcome our viewers to our wonderful new radio show? I don't think that's uh, necessary. Uh, okay. We're going to get uh, into the topics uh, that we have uh, thoroughly prepared right yes. away. You know, because I don't think. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I don't know what I was going to say. Anyway, <laughs> oh, is this working? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, my friend Spigot, how the hell are you? I'm good, thank you. Although I don't appreciate your Australian accent, Cornelia. I find it somewhat offensive. Offensive? Uh, well, yes. let me tell you a story, okay? Yes. You know that yes. I am uh, slightly overweight, right? Uh, because oh, of yes. my... only slightly. Of only slightly. Only. This is a consequence of my opulent uh, lifestyle, yes. you know? Yes. It's difficult to, to, when you are so successful as I am and so focused on achievement, it's difficult yes. to, to, to regard Define. yourself. Well, anyway, I have this uh, phone app to manage my weight. Uh, this uh -huh. is very middle class. It might yes. sound something strange to you. Yes. And uh, this morning, just uh, one hour ago, uh, I uh, stood up on the scale and the phone and you know sent me this message telling me whether or not i was sure that uh, i was the same person as the week before i see and you you've become morbidly obese i i assume cornelio i had gained four pounds in one week that's amazing was implying that I was either lying or a binge eating degenerate. Uh, yes. It was very disrespectful. I am used to being disrespected by, by human Phone beings, apps. but uh, yes. not by phones. No. This is. No, we'll uh, get used to it, Cornelia, because that's the way of the future. That's the way things are going, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that in that way. So I yes. am like a pioneer. A uh, yes. humiliation, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we're breaking new ground every day here on the station and in our own lives. And that's what makes this uh, radio show really special, I think, Cornelia. Because we're both two dynamic young men, We've got our mm. whole lives ahead of us, and anything's possible. We're breaking new ground, and uh, I'm also breaking my pants every fucking yes. day. Uh, and my mother in law is uh, repairing and them the like uh, two or three times a week. That's excellent. Yes. Cornelio, I, I wish you the best in your efforts towards, uh, what would we call it, breaking new ground. Mm -hmm. right. So, <clears throat> uh, the other day I was uh, surprised at, um, I don't know, I expected you to be more a more vital person. You, you sounded very depressed. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Well, Cornelio, that's because it was... Around 6.30 p.m., I usually turn in for the night around, uh, oh, I don't know. No, that's a complete mm. lie that I was about to say, but I'll say it anyway because it's interesting. I usually turn in for the night around 8 p.m. and get up at 5, 6 a.m. Mm. That's what I used to do, but now I, now I don't do that. Now what I do, Cornelio, is somewhat less respectable and interesting. Mm -hmm. And I cannot what tell you, you what it is. I cannot tell you. I cannot. I, I would have to kill myself out of shame if I was to tell anyone what I really do. Well, with you're life. going to have to kill yourself anyway. Yes. So uh, yes. you can tell me. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, perhaps you're not that to fast. Tell me. Yeah, pardon me. Yes. Can you repeat, please? No, I can't hear you. I can hear you, but I'm just messing with you. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I sort of heard what you said. Um, in any case, Cornelio, you said that you were, uh, you, I sounded I, quite sad. Well, you know, I hope, Cornelio, to convey, what would we call it, a more, a more jocular and welcoming impression this week, now that it's 4.13pm. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I've noticed the, the contrast. Uh, I'm yes, glad absolutely. because this is a podcast that uh, is all about inspiring people. And, inspiring uh, people with new heights. Uh, that's it. That, that's the idea. Yes. So, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Oh, well, Cornelio, you lazy bastard. I'll come up with something. Why not? You know, I mean, this was pretty clear a few days ago when we laid all this out. But, you know, that's fine, Cornelio. I'm used to it. I'm used to doing all the work for everyone around me. That's all right. That's perfectly fine. And You, you are know, entirely just, overworked. I'm entirely overworked, Cornelio. I cannot relax. I work, 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 mm -hmm. work, 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 you know, and I can't even sleep because sleep counts as work. And you get there and you're like, oh, God, well, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? Huh? It's, it's make or break. <laughs> and it yeah. doesn't, doesn't always work out. It doesn't always work out, Cornelio. And then you end up like me right now, amped up, jacked up, ready to go, you know? Horny as all hell. That's what it's all about, Cornelio. We're going to get down to brass tacks and make something That's happen. absolutely amazing. So yes. have you actually prepared something? Well, Cornelio, you son of a bitch, you didn't ask me to prepare anything. However, I do have these riddles. I do have several riddles, nine riddles, each of which are, you know, uh, assembled in the form of uh, rhyming couplets, two rhyming couplets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would be happy to read some to our viewers. Because, of course, what else are we going to do for the next 20 or 30 minutes? Well, we'll have to come up with something. Maybe this will buy us a little time. In any case, riddle the first. Da -da -da -da, the first okay. riddle. Yeah, please okay. proceed. Yes, I will. Riddle number five. We've ever been gregarious, at least as many as your ears. Elusive and hilarious, we'll hide and put you in arrears. What are we? There you go. And viewers, if you can solve this riddle, please feel free to write in to Radio Cornelio, block bag 97, Crow's Nest, uh, Sydney, and we will send you a beautiful Colotto ham if you should uh, happen to get the correct answer. Now, this is a beautiful ham, some of the finest meats we have on offer, and you are really missing out if you do not make an attempt to solve this riddle. So, can Cornelio. I, can I attempt an answer? Yes, can you I attempt can, an Cornelio. answer? Yes, you can. Is it cupcakes? No, it is not cupcakes, Cornelio, and I, I, I don't even okay. really suspect that you were trying there. So, mm -hmm. we will move on rapidly. So, topics to discuss the reality of other people. Well, Cornelio, I assume this topic is addressed to me personally, but why not turn the tables and ask you what you think mm -hmm. about the ultimate and verifiable reality of the people around you? Do you care? Do you particularly care? Well, um, I, I, I have a quote here, straight from uh, one of your posts. Okay. Ah, yes. Of course. And this is this is why I asked you the question the other day, the question that wasn't recorded. Yes. Uh, about uh, about this, and and the quote goes like this: uh, Other people are worthless automatons who revel in the feces of their own non-existence. I this see. This is right from one of your posts. I see. Well, Cornelio, I'll have to take your word for it and do the best no, I can. No. I, I made it up, but I remember that uh, you use the you use the word automatons. Is this automatons, correct? Automatons, yes, yes, I did, Cornelio. Well, it's, it, it's quite an interesting question that we're getting mm -hmm. into here, because of course the point is, well, you know, to what extent is anything predictable? And the answer is to no extent whatsoever, as far as I can tell. But well, of course, your... yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, of course. Yes, but of course, Cornelio, oh my goodness, well, this isn't exactly something that one can speak off the cuff about, but I will do my very best, of course, for our viewers' sake. Yes, of course, viewers viewing in the theatre of the mind's eye. Okay, well, let's move on. So, automatons, predictability, people seem do you mind, quite... Do you, mind, me? do you mind if yes. I eat an empanadilla as you speak? Yes, just as I'm beginning to answer the question, yes, no, I don't mind at all. Okay, okay, please proceed. Yes, of course. Ah, I hear a rustling. There is presumably some kind of delicious food being unwrapped there. But yes, the answer. Um, well, 
<laughs> people very often do seem predictable, and the fact is that there is probably a perspective, a higher and more complex perspective, from which I myself would appear robotic and predictable. And presumably this is just a failure in a, you know, you know, it's the sort of thing with the DMT, isn't it? Because these people get all of their wires tripped and they're all like, you know, hot dog, everything's amazing, everything's alive and loving and interested in me. And some of them, some of them take the opposite approach, you know, I wouldn't, they don't take the opposite approach, I suppose it takes them. And uh, they feel that things are meaningless, painful, uh, irrelevant, etc. And so maybe really ultimately this is a, oh my god, yes, well uh, this is obviously a flawed uh, explanation, but I'll get on to why later, we'll just lay it out for now. So maybe, of course, this is just a failure of myself to uh, feel a certain way, we might not even say the correct way about these issues. However, then you yeah, would that, have that, to say, okay, always, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you write on the forum, you always yeah. express all this insane ideas like that uh, people don't actually exist etc but w oh, when yeah. you speak in the podcast you always take a much more reasonable stand where yeah. you recognize that maybe it's a failure of yours that you don't understand properly and all this yes there is no contradiction this is not going to work for the podcast i see so you would like me to be you have to be reasonable in the in the forum and fucking insane here okay okay Please proceed. Okay, well, I'll try my best. I am. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I, I was about to get there, in fact, with, with something. Uh -huh. However, it's not that insane. Oh, you know, Cornelia, I mean, that's the idea. I mean, all of these thoughts, which I'm laying out here quite reasonably, are typically laid out within my own mind or within the post. And then all of the little scaff... You know, it's sort of like you're building a structure. There's scaffolding, and at the end, you take the scaffolding away. Well, here in this frame, I cannot easily as scaffold my developing arguments. I have to kind of spew them out like a kind of torrent of diarrhea or sewage from my mouth and into this microphone here and then into the ears of our listeners. So, absolutely. And so this, uh, this idea that this may be a failure on my part, well, maybe not a failure because as I was about to say, it's not to say that there is a correct manner of perceiving. We might say that there is a more or less uh, gratifying manner of perceiving, but then the question would be, Cornelio, and this of course is the question that long ago drove me entirely mad in ways which aren't immediately perceptible, this question of the ultimate meaning of all of these things and of course what the best possible course of action in any given life is. Now I feel as though I have not come to an answer, but I have eliminated perhaps every false answer. However, of course, there are holes in, there are always holes. There are always holes in our understanding. And of course, you know, all you have, if you think you've figured things out, is the sensation of having figured things out, which is inevitably proven wrong. Or maybe you die before that happens. And, uh, you know, otherwise, Cornelio, it's just a chaos, an endless chaos. Mm -hmm. Which is quite enjoyable in the end when you just learn to go along with it. It's all it's all quite enjoyable. However, then you get the Christian arguments. You get you talk to the Christians. Many of them we know that these people aren't rigorous thinkers. That's all right. We can't expect them to be. They may not have the time. They may not have the inclination. So on and or so forth. You know. Pardon me. Or maybe they are just retards. Or maybe they're just retards. Well, Cornelio, as an extremely polite and urbane and cultured and civilized individual and, and a coward, I, I tend to refrain from weren't making you, this direct. Yeah? Weren't you a Catholic like two months ago? Ah, yes, I last year. Last year. You were Catholic. I was Catholic last year, yes. Last year. And you may be one. You make last it sound year. like it was a decade ago. You are here yes. disrespecting all Christians worldwide while well, you yes. used to be a Christian yourself like three yes. months ago. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's interesting, isn't it? Well, you yeah. know, that's an interesting point, Cornelia. Um, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, even when I was uh, actively attending church and everything, I, I certainly didn't have much in... And I was, you know, I was that dickhead who goes and, you know, criticizes 
the bloody liturgy and how it's all carried out and oh well things could be more this and that and it's like oh well you know do you really think guitars are the most appropriate instrument for a church gathering you know it's sort of like this is all pretty lame and gay stuff well you know i, I didn't use those terms of course i use terms like you know uh, faithful uh, and impressive, you know, with regard to expressing the idea of Christianity. But, but that's mm -hmm. essentially what I meant. And so, you know, you go to these functions and you see this black fellow in like white ripped jeans. And it's sort of like I said, you know, all these people dress sort of like, sort of like, you know, a kind of weird large version of how people dress their five-year-olds 10 years ago. It's weird, you know, mm -hmm. with the ripped jeans. I mean, it's like, you know, no one wears ripped jeans. No one wears deliberately. I mean, you know, some girls, you know, girls of certain kind do. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just weird. It's just weird. They, they keep trying to look cool and it, it just absolutely falls flat on its face in the most spectacular and grotesque way. And it's a shame. And you, you understand why why people aren't really going to these services. Because, I mean, the one thing that Christianity has to offer well, specifically Catholicism, I suppose, well, you know, all of these branches, are these claims to eternal truth. And when you get rid of those in favor of, you know, the flavor of the moment, in favor of ultimate shitbag kind of 70s guitar folk nonsense and ripped yeah. jeans, well, it's like, what exactly do you have? You're like sugar-free Pepsi, you know? You're just secularism without sex and drugs yeah. and all of the stuff that makes it interesting and appealing. You just suck. And, you know, of course, in the back room, there's the priest hooked up to the sex machine or whatever, getting <laughs> buggered, sodomized to death in some kind of horror sex scenario, you know. Uh, and so there's not really much going for the, the other day, secular... The other, day, yeah. the other day, I was with my wife and my children at the park. Oh, yes. And... Uh, it's hell. It's it's the most horrible thing, the most horrible situation where you are with all those uh, other parents who are all fucking retards. <laughs> and uh, this is a small village, and everybody knows who I am. It's not like you are in a city where where you are with people you don't know, and it's more comfortable. So I hate it. I, I always yes. try to avoid that situation. Okay, so there's a How church. Does go, go on. The, the village church is nearby, so I told my wife, well, I'm going to check the, the church and, uh, you know, it was just an excuse to, to get away from all the other parents. So I, I went to the church and they were, uh, as I opened the door, uh, a music came out. And, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, some organ music or anything like that. It, it was uh, a cover of... Uh, Simon and Garfunkel song oh, God. with uh, some Christian lyrics, and uh, I I returned with the parents. I, I was yes. back with the parents and enjoying yes. their company, like uh, ten seconds after opening the door. It was one of the most homosexual experiences I've had in in the last week, at least. At least, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. God, it's mournful stuff, isn't it? I mean, it's sort of like you know. Yeah, I went to I went round the uh, one of these university campuses the other week, and there was this little sign advertising a, a you know a English corner. Go and talk to foreign students who haven't learned English, so on and so forth. And I go to it, and I I see this guy. I see this sort of tall, blondish guy with this smile plastered on his face, and I immediately get this kind of nausea in my in the guts what do you call them yeah in the bowels of my stomach i don't know what the expression is but you know he, he turned me off is the point so i went down there and it turns out it's this evangelical thing and the thing is with the evangelicals they have a kind of caste system you notice they have these kind of weird small inoffensive sleepy looking guys and they have these sort of tall perpetually smiling sort of pseudo handsome guys and then they have these mutants they just stick at all of the stalls that are always everywhere and they they've just got acne and they've just they're just small and malformed and they've all got these horrible sleepy little eyes and they just have i mean you know you go to a protestant church and it's like a brick box yeah, these places suck or you know you go to one of those horrible utterly satanic and evil mega churches uh, oh god yeah it's just you know you, you're caught go, between I a rock and a hard place but go on 
Go on. Yeah, I would love to go to one of those uh, mega churches. Yes. I, and we don't have that here. It's every everything is Catholic or pseudo Catholic. Yes. And uh, uh, there are some Protestant churches, very small, and it's mostly gypsies there. Ah uh, yes. I think mega churches are a great idea, and uh, I would really like to to go to one of those. I think they take the spirit of uh, the sports stadium. Yes. Uh, you know, I like NBA and all this. Yes. I'm a fan, NBA fan, and yes. uh, I think that uh, combining that with that power, that uh, that powerful feeling with uh, religion is uh, it can be extremely satisfying. That is actually probably right. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I hadn't thought of that, but usually they make it so horrible with this kind of, I don't know, they have this kind of parallel universe of Christian rock and this awful pop, and it's just like, you know, a watered-down imitation of whatever else is on the radio, which isn't that good in the first place, that sort of thing. You know, so, yeah, if you could get a mega church with a light show, with all of this bizarre stuff flying around in the air or something like that. And you could maybe work some hallucinogens or something into it too. That would really recreate the early church experience, I believe, in a way that would be gratifying for the consumer, for the religious consumer in the end. Yeah, they, they could have um, uh, basketball games. Yes, during the service. In the middle of the, in the, middle of the service. They could yes. have a curve. Right in the middle there, and um, and that would keep people, you know, uh, involved. I believe in a way that modern church services really uh, cannot claim to. Yes, uh, I was thinking about these niggers running around yes. the court uh, during the service. <laughs> they could, yes. they could yes. dunk, dunk the ball. Uh, they could jump on the altar yes. and dunk the ball in the sacred chalice. Yes, you know, the, or even through the crown of thorns. Yeah. And they could when hang on the crown of thorns. Yeah, on the crown and of that thorns. Would be, that would really get the kids involved. And I love it. And church attendance, I believe, would rise by at least 3%. Yeah, it's a, it's a brilliant idea. I mean, Cornelia, this is really, this is where change makers. We're influencers. We're think influencers. You know, you know the That's thing. Great. The thing with, with Christianism this day is that uh, some some uh, internet idiots uh, complain yes. that uh, nobody cares about Christianism anymore because it has been watered down. But yes. uh, my theory, my hypothesis, is that nobody cares because it hasn't been watered down enough. You know. Yes, exactly. We need to water it down more with uh, basketball courts in the middle of the church and niggers dunking on crowns of thorns and yeah, all yeah, this yeah. Christian music. We need Carol Christian hip-hop and all this. What's going to save the West and save Christianity, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't you know. You could have a guy, guy selling peanuts or something in the stands. You know, just re recreating the American baseball experience for the modern religious consumer. And that, I think, is really the way forward. That's a great idea, man. Yes. Because just as I am eating an empanadilla right now, as I record yes. this, I want yes. to eat an empanadilla as I uh, enter into communion with the divine. Yes. I mean, wasn't Jesus eating in the in the Last Supper? They yes. were they were together and they were eating. So why not have peanuts? This is indisputable. At the peanuts. church. Well, I mean, yeah, you could have peanuts. You could have panera bread. You could have bocadillo. You could have damn near anything, couldn't you? I mean, you That's know, the it. possibilities are really endless, really endless. I mean, you could have a supermarket on site, a cafe, a play area for the kids, mm -hmm. like a McDonald's. Like a McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's is everywhere. So if we were to fuse the okay. two things together, I think that really we would in increase our, uh, what would we call it, market capture mm -hmm. very adequately. Very adequately. I think ultimately this is the way forward. I mean, you can't reject these uh, trends. Uh, they're happening. They're here to stay. And we just have to get used to them. Exactly. Um, life yeah. is about uh, adapting. 
to, to the exactly. new trend, new yes. ideas that, uh, that uh, succeed and you, you adapt to it and that's what yeah. success is about. It's, it's the survival of the fittest, isn't it, Cornelia? And uh, I, I think the church, in a way, exemplifies this. Uh, they've been very, very successful uh, adapting to to the you know the, the new trends and all that. It's been a great yes. success. Yes. Yes, like sex machines and you know homosexuality, all that, all that good stuff. Okay, so I don't know why. Why are we talking about this? Why are we What's talking that? about this? Well, Cornelio, I felt that the good this wasn't conversation. In the script. This wasn't in the script. Well, Cornelio, that's the excellent thing. I felt that the conversation was taking it a, you know, developing in an organic way, and of course, that's what the script is for. We reach <laughs> back into it whenever we run out of things to talk about. That's our little oh. bag of tricks, isn't it? So, what's on the script? <laughs> Summary of your life. Well, who'd be interested in that? Which of our listeners can you, can would be interested? Can you, tell us, can you tell us another of your riddles? Another of my riddles? Yes, no, please. I cannot. No, we're limited to one a week, and until I get an answer, we're not having a new riddle. You said you were going to read several riddles, if I recall I correctly. I see, but that was, that was before things changed. You understand no, you, things you, change. Developments you are, happen. You are extremely untrustworthy, my friend. <clears throat> I am anti it's anti not, what? Untrustworthy. This is, not what we yes. to talk about. this is not what we agreed to talk about. Well, Cornelia, my friend, you know uh, the situation. The game has changed. Unfortunately, the worm has turned. The tables have turned, and here I am. And I think that we're turning on our viewers with this marvelous conversation that we're having. I mean, t not turning on in a sexual sense, but you know, just the. Uh, in the excited sense, we're, we're exciting them, um, I hope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We will see, we will see, won't we? We will see whether we're the toast of town or whether we're, you know, just trash in their or eyes. Both. Or, both. or both. Because mm -hmm. they're greedy, hungry little things, aren't they, Cornelio? And they just want to be entertained, but they don't want to give anything back. They just want to take and take and take, like vampires. But that's all right. Because I can well, give. I, my idea was uh, to ask uh, for donations, you know. Donations, uh, yes. Well, I mean, that's that's what it's all about, ultimately, isn't it? Getting the Patreon, getting the big money, getting the influence mm -hmm. happening, and then we can really take off. Uh, I, I meant to say take over and take off, but I, I actually said both. And at the same time, <laughs> neither. Because I was so excited about what's possible for us, Cornelio, and, and by extension, all of our listeners, all of our wonderful and, and very well endowed listeners who are, who are willing to give us money for nothing. You, you have a voice that uh, it's really well suited for radio. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, oh, look. Your, accent, your, your whole uh, presence in the airwaves is uh, yeah. quite impressive. Well, we're making impressions, aren't we, Cornelia? We're making waves in the airwaves, on the radio, and uh, that's what it's all about. That's how it's going to go. You know, I, I'm really enthusiastic about this. I'm really optimistic about our success. The uh, yeah, but, cocaine but, suppository but, I took, yeah. Now that you mentioned that, you were also very enthusiastic and optimistic about uh, that uh, magazine of yours that you were going to, to edit. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, well, Cornelio, let me say, let me say, this is the beginning of my No Regrets Tour, because that's mm. what I'm all about, having no regrets. And that's what I want my listeners to take away from this, you know? Um, I am willing to be paid $1,500 by every one of our listeners in order to continue talking about this subject at a later date. But for now, all I'll say, I have no regrets. I have no regrets. I make no apologies to anyone. And, you know, you throw, you throw mud at the wall and you see what sticks. You see what sticks. It's that old, tried and true, time-tested uh, ethic, and I am not ashamed of my entrepreneurialism. Or my initiative. That's a, a good strategy. You you are never ashamed of anything. Yes, I'm I'm without you may, shame. You have no regrets. You never apologize. No. You know. That's uh, very useful. When you are continually disappointing people, letting people down, when yes. you have failed in everything you have ever attempted, it's very useful yes. to have no regrets. Yes. 
Because I it makes no people regrets. think they've failed. I have failed. no regrets. You know why? Yes. Yes. Because I have succeeded at everything I have ever attempted. Yes. Well, join the club, Cornelio. Join the winner's circle that we're in. What, what it's about it's composed of two of us, what but about it's a circle. Magazine? You need to succeed at the magazine. The magazine? Did I succeed at the magazine? Well, I succeeded at failing, Cornelio. I succeeded at giving it a go. Oh, uh, that takes us to uh, this uh, thing you were talking about the other day, about uh, your approach to entrepreneurship. I yes. thought it was very interesting. It was a real pity that it wasn't recorded. Do it, do Absolutely. Due to my competence. So can yes. you can you talk about that uh, a little bit now? Yes, because my approach, uh, Cornelio, uh, as an aristocrat of the spirit in all things, is to uh, set standards so high that they become impossible to attain, and then to blame everyone around me for my failure. And this has served me so well throughout my life, Cornelio. It's it's made me the man I am today. You know, I mean, you look at my opulent lifestyle. You look at this beautiful ditch. <laughs> I'm sleeping in these extraordinary bugs crawling in and out of my mouth, and you wish you could be me, and you can, if you buy my ebook and listen to my radio show and give me your money. You know, it's as simple as that, listeners. So, um, you created this product that you knew beforehand that uh, no one was interested in. Yes, absolutely. You knew <clears throat> no one, no one would, would buy it, Yes. And uh, despite this, or maybe because of this, you decided to uh, dedicate several years to developing this product. Yes. And uh, only to ultimately fail. Yes. And that is what I recommend all our listeners do. Because mm -hmm. nothing can go wrong if you do that. I mean, if you do that, well, you, you really are, you've taken the moral high road, haven't you? You've taken the high road instead of the messy low road of actually getting things done. Now, mm -hmm. when you are in this situation, you can simply lie about your achievements. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, you you can lie about your achievements yes. without all the work, without all the work yes. of uh, you know developing a, a failing product. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's no work, but you're getting all the payoff, and that's what work's all about in the end, ultimately, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. It it it's yeah. all about the payoff. Absolutely. And if you can get the payoff without doing the work, wouldn't you? Um, I suppose so. Absolutely. And I'm getting the emotional payoff and more. Not only the emotional payoff of having achieved, but also of having deceived people and taken advantage of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, now you're living in a ditch. Absolutely, but I, I've taken the moral high road and I feel quite content with my living situation at this time. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, uh, I have to go to work now. I, I am at work right now. Yes. Well, Cornelio, have a think about what we've discussed. And maybe what that could, uh, how that could influence your working life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, a good idea. <laughs> Maybe not, but uh, I have to to go and uh, I don't know unclog some toilets or something like that right now. Yes. Clean the pool, and um, I I will apply uh, the lessons we have uh, we have yes. uh, learned. My business secrets. And uh, I will try to edit this as soon as possible because I know our audience is uh, really hungry. hungry, they're hungry for like dogs. Sides. Filthy yeah. little animals. I hate eating every one of them. Yeah. But no, I mean, yeah. yeah, I love all of my listeners, ultimately, in the end. That's what it's all Idiot. about, right? Love. At the end of the day, we love them. We love them. We love all of them so much. And we want you to write in. Simply hmm. post in the topic or send me an email. And uh, we can discuss topics of your choice each week, because then we don't have to come up with them ourselves. So really, it all works out for everyone, doesn't it? Yes, in the end, it all works out. Uh, in the end, it all happens, works out. Unless it doesn't, and you end up living in a ditch. But uh, you know, course. that's only an exception. That's always, you know, even then, you win. It's a win-win situation, you know. Yes, or a lose-lose 
situation yeah, in, well, in a certain way. We don't like to use that term here, can we, Leo? There's no such okay. thing as a loss. Sorry about that. Only a win that you haven't taken advantage of yet. Mm -hmm. Well, um, talk to you in a couple of days. Oh, God, a couple of days. Well, you're keeping me on the treadmill there, aren't you, Cornelia? But all right. All right. Hamster wheel, treadmill. What difference I, does I it make so, at this point? I am so incredibly surprised that we actually uh, are talking a second time and recording it. That yes. uh, I want to, to, to make use of the momentum and uh, yes, we, we will record as fast as we possibly can and then get yeah, as much it. money out of as fast as we possibly can and get out. Yes. That's what we want to do. Exactly. We, we should record several, several podcasts every day. And Absolutely. Uh, inevitably, in three or four days, we're, gonna, we're going to have a falling out or we're going to, to fight or something like that. Yes, and over money. Or you, you will be you will be hospitalized or something like that. Yeah, and, uh, probably. I'll I'll probably be dead soon. But you know, yeah. it just comes with territory, doesn't it? Now, listeners, if you would like my premium Snapchat, you can DM me. Of course, this is entirely private, exclusive, an exclusive offer to our listeners. So uh, get in fast. Okay. Thank you very much, Spigot. Always well, thank a you, pleasure. Cornelia. Always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Have a good day, Cornelio. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye.